I remember in the fall of 2013, we were having a worship time together as a, a community, and this word came forward, get ready for the unpredictable. We didn't know what that meant. But a couple months after that, we had a couple visitors come. Ron and Judy Smith have uh, worked in Lakeside, Montana, and they've also pioneered the School of Biblical Studies in Youth of the Mission. They are people who have been investing in our ministry for over 20 years, and we really trust them. And Ron, at the end of his visit, said, I really feel like you guys should be considering this idea of not charging fees for your programs. That is the unpredictable because uh, that's backwards. We haven't done it that way. We've never done it that way. We laughed the idea off. I did bring it back to our leadership team. And as we prayed about it, talked about it, it was almost like this sobriety was on the idea that as much as it seemed like a backward idea initially, that God had his hand on it. In Luke 5, Jesus instructs his disciples to go out into the waters to start fishing, even though they had tried the night before and it didn't work. And Peter says, this seems like an absurd idea, but I'll do it anyways. There was something about not charging fees that would be similar to that, that we would be obeying the Lord in an unpredictable way, in, in uh, a way that required us to step out in faith. And so as a ministry, we prayed about it and came to the same conclusion, but we didn't feel like the time was right. And that was, that was the spring of 2014. So fast forward up to January of 2019. We are having a, a ministry-wide or a campus-wide time together of prayer, and this leader from our ranks comes up and says, hey, I got this word. It's this idea of consecration, uh, but we're being set aside for a specific task. Set aside for a specific task. Didn't really know what that meant either, but a month afterwards, we had an intercessory team that just happened to choose YWAM Turner Valley as their place to to buckle down for a few nights and just pray for YWAM Canada. And while they were here, they felt like YWAM Turner Valley had something new coming. And they had this picture of a flood in our valley here. This flood came through, it was cataclysmic and changed everything. And it was reconstructive at the same time. There was something apostolic about it. And they just left that word with us. But that really, I would say that really built some excitement. Oh, there's this new specific task going to be cataclysmic and yet reconstructed. September rolls around of 2019 and we don't have enough students for our School of Biblical Studies, which has been a mainstay of Wyoming Turner Valley. Our School of Biblical Studies has run uninterrupted now for 20 years. It's been the bread and butter of who we are, our DNA. We're, we're about missions, we're about scripture. So this was really discouraging. It was also a bit confusing given these cataclysmic, flood-like, reconstructive words. We were confused, I'll admit. So we set ourselves to prayer. The whole of the, the ministry came together uh, weekly, uh, bi-weekly. We were praying, we were fasting. And the direction of the prayer came back to this idea of not charging fees. But this time, when the word came up, it felt like there was a different twist than there was in 2014. Now, God was giving more understanding of why we wouldn't be charging fees. That there was a different kind of discipleship that he was calling us to. But it would be more like a faith journey together, as opposed to the way that we'd done it in the past. He kept pointing towards attitude and towards holiness, and how those two things were intertwined with each other. Uh, and so, in the process of that, and then eventually in sharing with the whole community, realizing the Lord was speaking through Hebrews 12 to ask us and challenge us as a group, do we have an attitude of humility when God asks us to step into difficult things? Uh, when difficult times come, am I seeking an attitude that is submissive, that is humble, that is saying, if I call myself a child of God, am I willing to act like a child of God and be disciplined and be led into hard things? Uh, and in the process of that, also realizing the perspective that holiness and pursuing holiness, it's something that we have to participate in. It doesn't just happen. Uh, and so when God is calling me to step into a time of consecration, which is about being made holy, that requires me to step up. And so for a community, that means it requires us to step up. And for us, that looks like checking our attitudes. Are we submitting to this discipline? Are we willing to embrace these things that are a little bit scary <laughs> to consider? And then the other part was, are we being relational about this, that holiness 
doesn't happen to me off by myself. It happens between me and the Lord, but it also happens in the context of the body of Christ. I believe it was a very strong challenge and, and helped move us forward as a group into this decision because it required that we were all communicating. It required that we were all on the same page. Uh, it required that no one was, you know, left behind in, in the process of deciding whether or not to do this. We had to make the decision about faith journey if we were going forward with this uh, this idea of of faith journey and solely providing or solely looking for God for the provision uh, by November 12th. And I think this would have been two weeks before then, uh, so the second last Wednesday prayer time, and the story of the spies going into Canaan. Uh, Joshua and Caleb leading with the other the ten other spies going into Canaan pops into my mind. When I read through the story of the spies uh, going into Canaan, then felt that I was supposed to keep reading. So beyond just the story that I knew and keep going into the backlash that, the, that Joshua and Caleb and that Moses, who ultimately had this faith of, yes, let's go into the land of Canaan, let's face the giants in, in a lot of senses, and let's, um, yeah, let's trust God with this. And so looking into the backlash that they received in that. And I was reminded of the story um, from Exodus 32 when Moses is getting the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai from the Lord and Israel starts to get nervous. They think that their leader is gone and so they form themselves a golden calf um, because they need something else to follow. And so reminded again of this story of, yeah, just the two comparisons of how they're in these huge moments of, of Israel's history and these huge moments of God doing something and the people are all fearful. The people are all, people are all scared and they don't have trust in that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. Uh, that God isn't going to be who he said he's going to be. I wrote it on the board and that brought forward just a lot of confirming words that whether we went forward with faith journey or not, whether we um, operated in the same way that we have been for the last 30 plus years or not, that whatever decision going forward was to be made, that it wasn't to be made out of fear with what God has asked us to go forward with and entrusting him with that. Uh, with Faith Journey, we still clearly know our financial needs, uh, but it's more of an open question, how God will provide for that, where that money uh, will come from. In the past, uh, the, the leadership here has had a, a sort of stance where we've sought to protect students and staff from some of the uh, financial realities and financial workings of the ministry. Uh, with Faith Journey, we're looking for that to be uh, very much open and for everyone to know where we're at, what our needs are, uh, whether that feels entirely comfortable or not. And, and so that uh, draws us together more in prayer, seeking God for a direction, seeking Him uh, for provision. We exist to train, send, and support God's people to go among the unreached. Now, if you're called to uh, a more remote place, uh, to say plant a church among an unreached people group, I think we would all agree that takes a mature faith. Here as a group, we seek to uh, develop our relationship with God and allow Him to develop within each of us a faith that is more daring, more willing to, to trust, and more willing to take risks. As we were seeking to discern how God has called us to conduct ourselves on this faith journey, there were four primary values that we felt God had called us to. The first of these is prayer. So prayer is the first step and the foundation of how we feel God has called us to seek His provision in this time. Prayer not only for provision, but also prayers for the servant of how to use the resources that we have, and prayers of celebration when we do see God provide. The second of these is generosity. We don't want to take for granted what God has given us, but we want to make sure that we're able to be free in our ministry activities, to use the resources that God has given us for His glory and to advance His kingdom. We don't want to get into a mindset in which we are uh, holding tight onto our resources in fear that God will not continue to provide, because we trust that He will. The third of these is obedience. The faith journey itself is an act of obedience. We feel like God has called us into this faith journey and we're going to continue to obey whatever he calls us to do uh, as we continue along this journey. The fourth and final value that we feel God is calling us to is celebration. Our celebration is already a very big aspect of this campus 
uh, celebrating what God is doing through our ministries, what God is doing in various people's lives. But we really want to celebrate as we see God take us on this journey of faith, uh, continuing to give us opportunities to share our faith more, to demonstrate it more by trusting in His vision.